Good evening. Our opening song is number 523, All Creatures of Our God and King, and we'll be singing verses 1 and 7. Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's call to mind our sin and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery grant us we pray that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of 
eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. Good to be with you. I saw a few weeks ago. Um, I don't really track these things, so it kind of just came out of nowhere. I saw like in, I saw it in an article, but the U.S. Surgeon General put out this 80-page document on an ep, on an ep, on an epidemic of loneliness in America. Did we hear about that or see about that? No, it was in, kind of it was in the news a bit. Yeah, and I didn't read the 80 pages. I, mean, I have a life. But, um, but I, I just read like, his, his letter in the, in the opening part of it. And the opening part of it really is a beautiful letter that he writes. Um, again, it's not really a genre of like, beautiful uh, writing in certain general letters. But the letter he wrote in that 80-page document talks about that we in America, um, I would say probably in the West, but in America, we're becoming more and more lonely and that there's a real health effect to our loneliness. He says that the, morbid, the morbidity of this loneliness is equal to smoking 15 cigarettes every day. That's what loneliness is doing to us, is that it's like smoking 15 smokes a day, and that's the effects of loneliness on our lives, on our bodies, on our minds. And he talks about that to, to fight against this. It's not something we do with medicine, something we do with relationships. So Surgeon General is proposing that we, that we kind of redo, revamp, reimagine human society that goes back to cultivating relationships, putting down technology, visiting people, forming relationships, and, and serving one another through acts of charity and service. The Surgeon General is kind of a neat little, it's like a one, one page letter. It's kind of neat just to kind of read that and hear that. But I think it's a profound reality. I think we all can see that and can sense that. Um, especially, especially in young people. I think young people are so plugged into technology that promises great connection, but all it really does is, is create a disconnection and an, and an alienation and a loneliness. In young people, but also in adults, in the elderly, no one to visit them, and care for them, um, people who have no family left to, to call them. There's so much loneliness in our culture, in our world. And the great remedy to that isn't a medicine or some kind of grand idea. It's simple relationships. And that the human body, it needs relationships. We thrive in relationship. We thrive in love. We thrive in human connection. It's not just a platitude. It's not just something you know, that we talk about in spiritual terms. The real secular attorney general is talking about it in terms of human health. That we need to reconnect as a culture and get back to looking out for each other and building relationships. Again, that's not really my field of study, my area of competency. I thought it was just an interesting thing to read. Because it reminds me really of the spiritual life. That the spiritual life really isn't about just understanding deep theologies. Isn't just about understanding the, the people of the Bible, the story of the saints, or the working of deep and profound theologies and philosophies. Those are awesome. And fall in love with all those things recklessly. 
because they're part of the joy of being a Christian, a joy of being, of being, being alive in the church. But more profoundly, what it means to be a Christian is that we are people of relationship. We are people of love. We are people that go out and serve one another recklessly because that's what it means to be alive. That's what it means to be fully human is that we encounter people and we love them for no other reason than they are human. For no other reason than they are made the image and likeness of God. We don't care what you do. We don't care the category that you fall under, the sin you might have, or the label you throw on yourself. It just doesn't matter. Real Christians love souls. And souls aren't about the totality of good deeds versus bad deeds. Souls is what's inside. Souls is what we're creating the image and likeness of. Souls are begotten and loved by God. Souls are saved by God on the cross. And we're called to love all people, not just those who please us, not just those who we have connections with, but everybody. To be church, to be Christian, means we encounter the other, because we have first encountered Christ, and Christ has encountered us. And in that encounter, we understand the trueness of what it is to be Christian. In that encounter with Christ, we understand what it means to be church. And we share that encounter with other people. On this Feast of the Holy Trinity, we are simply just worshiping relationship. We're simply worshiping connection. At the end of the day, for all of the great and beautiful and locutious language that God is, again, love those things, recklessly fall in love with all that language and theology. It's fun. End of the day, though, all God is, is a relationship. All God is, is a Father, Son, and Spirit simply in love. And we worship relationship. We worship connection. We worship love. That's what we do. All the language we have and the titles and the categories of, of God and the world and theology, philosophy, all those things aside, all of those things serve that relationship, that encounter, that connection of Father, Son, and Spirit. And if we don't have that encounter, in connection spiritually with him, we ain't a Christian. We like Christian ideas, we ascend to those truths, but we don't worship ideas, we worship a God. And that God is that connection and that relationship. So in Trinity Sunday, we simply remind ourselves that to have full health of mind, body, and spirit, we build connections. We build relationships. We serve people. We love people. We meet their needs. We don't judge them. We don't categorize them. We don't label them. They're people. They're sons and daughters of the Father. It's the divine spouse of the bridegroom, Christ. And we love them as the bridegroom loves them. We love them as the Father loves them. We have relationship with them as the Father has relationship with them. If we really want to understand what it is to be Christian, really understand what it is to be church, Trinity Sunday shows us that. It's about imitating that Trinity whose image and likeness we are made, made out of. And it only happens if we go out to other people and we love them and we serve them. A faith in the church that just sits in the pew and just thinks about great ideas is kind of pointless. Like, it's neat, I mean, it's neat. Ideas are great, the pew is beautiful, but it's the connection that matters, that keeps us healthy, that keeps us alive. May that be how we understand people, understand the church, understand the world, and most importantly, understand God and his connection to us. And in that, become better Christians, in that, a more vibrant church, in that holier people who made the image and the likeness of a God who is nothing more than, than love, nothing more than connection, nothing more than relationship. If we have that, 
We have everything. We have the treasure of the church. I love you. Let's profess now our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that's one baptism, goodness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Present now our prayers to our Heavenly Father. That the preaching and teaching of the church will bless all with the desire to share in the life of the Blessed Trinity. We pray to the Lord. Lord that through the justice of earthly rulers, all will come to know God's authority and majesty. We pray to the Lord. Lord For our parish community, that our unity in the faith and as children of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit will never diminish. We pray to the Lord. Lord For those that live without faith, that the love of the Blessed Trinity will awaken their minds and give hope to their hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those in the military and for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, may they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel we pray to the Lord. That the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for John and Helen and Barbara Bayak, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Richard Selecki, who died this week. We pray to the Lord. Please pause now and add your own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly God, we come before you this evening with great faith, and that you hear and answer all prayers according to your will. May we remember that to truly know God isn't just to know some fancy language or philosophy isn't just to sit in a pew, it's to encounter people and to love them and build relationships, see them as souls worthy of redemption, worthy of eternal life. And those connections and relationships that we build and truly imitate the Trinity in this world, live the fullness of our lives here, part the fullness of our lives in eternity. And we ask all of these things confidently and joyfully through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Our song for the preparation of gifts is number 749, This Day God Gives Me. This day God gives me. See the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, become for us our spiritual drink. Pray brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, the sublation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, the Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person 
but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us by your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that confessing the, the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance, and their equality and majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and the seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day with one voice they acclaim. Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving things broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, wrong words, therefore we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've had us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Michael, Margaret, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to, to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on your sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world, blessed as part of the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our song for communion is number 813, One Bread, One Body.
Let us pray. May receiving the sacraments, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess the eternal Holy Trinity in undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And your mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a great week. Our closing song is number 519, Holy God, We Praise Thy Name. Thank <laughs> you.